So, I just re-listened to Blur's entire discography, and I thought, do you know what would be fun? How about, let's rank the Blur albums from stinkiest to most scented. <laughs> uh, that'll do as an intro. <laughs> We're off to a controversy, aren't we? Yeah, so I was listening to these albums in chronological order, and when I got to 1997's self-titled album, just one piercing thought occurred to me. I really hate this album. <laughs> Listen, it's not just because it's a stylistic departure from Britpop. It's because this album is a mess with very few actually good songs. I know I'm skating on thin ice already, but can I just say, Beetlebub is such an overrated track. I just find it slow, the outro overstays its welcome, and sure, it's not the worst song of the album, that honour goes to song two. Yeah, this is the album with song two on it. Country Sad Ballad Man is also unbelievably irritating, with only Graham Coxon's guitar being its saving grace. Another single from this album is M.O.R., which I found out was inspired by uh, David Bowie's Lodger, an album within Bowie's amazing discography that doesn't actually appeal to me very much, but that was a video for another day. Yeah, M.O.R. just uses the same chord sequence and kind of the same melody and just sort of... Uh, yeah, thoroughly uninteresting. Speaking of thoroughly uninteresting, Look Inside America. This song is just a rewrite of End of Century from Parklife, a far superior album. Theme from Retro is a pointless track. They should have just dropped it from the album. It's got the same vibe as Death of a Party, which, to be fair, is actually one of the better songs in this album. And if I can sing some praises from this album, I like On Your Own, I like the guitar riffs, I like the beat, I like some of the bass flourishes, I like the very shouty vocals. It's not a great song, but it does put a big stupid smile on my face. And honestly, the two best songs in this record are just not talked about. They weren't singles either. You're So Great is a fantastic Coxon only lo-fi slacker rock ballad. Strange News From Another Star is the other beautiful song on this album. It's music set to poetry. It's got that minor four cadence to major four. Uh, you know, I'm a sucker for that. I'm just a sucker for minor four cadence to ones. Stinky record. Please, let's move on. Okay. Ooh, we're still on that controversial train because there's one album that people really don't like that hasn't appeared yet, but... Mm. So yeah, Leisure. I don't dislike Leisure, but... I will admit, there are some classic singles on here, like She's So High, There's No Other Way, and Bang. But the thing with Leisure is that it has this shoegazy vibe to it, and unfortunately I'm not that big of a shoegaze fan. And songs like Sing and Birthday really drag to my ears at least. Moving on! Okay. Modern life is rubbish. We are in full swing. And yeah, it's a good album. I think it's a really great showcase of Graham Coxon's guitar abilities. But I think this album falls short on the spectrum of it being a little bit to Britpop. I mean, I've written some song names here, like Star Shaped, Coping, Turn It Up, Resigned. I don't even know what they sound like, I just don't simply don't remember. They are songs that have gone in one ear and out the other. Yeah, the singles are quite cleverly written. I think For Tomorrow and Chemical World are actually genuinely well-written, fun Britpop tunes. I find Blue Jeans to be quite an underrated song in this album as well. And the guitar effects in Oily Water a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, not one of my favourite Blur albums. Okay. Ah, we've got a controversy on a high placement this time. Yes, The Magic Whip. And yeah, I agree, it's a bit of a Damon Albarn solo project. It's even more of a solo project than the album without Graham Coxon. But listen, when this album dropped, there hadn't been a Blur drop in 12 years. You've got to realise that these musicians who didn't have the best relationship got together again and made a treat for the fans. Honestly, I don't see how songs like Go Out, I Broadcast, and Ong Ong don't scratch a Britpop itch. I mean, they genuinely feel like B-sides that could have been on Great Escape. But if I had to justify this high placement for this album, I think it's within the songs Thought I Was a Spaceman, My Terror Across a Heart, and Ghost Ship. These songs don't sound like solo Damon Albarn songs, and they don't sound like Blur songs. 
they sound like songs where four really good musicians got together and made three really good songs. I really like the way Thought I Was a Spaceman builds, and when that drum comes in, it's like so cathartic, I really like it. Ghost Ship is a fun, swanky one. And I find the songwriting of My Terracotta Heart to be quite good. It's one chord sequence, but they build on it and build on it, and it just feels like, I just find that they build on this chord sequence really well without adding more instrumentation. It's just really good build up. The rest of the album is sort of typical Damon Albarn solo stuff, you know, take it or leave it. But I will say that there is one particularly stinky song on this record called There Are Too Many Of Us, and it's stinky because of that dreadful, dreadful MIDI orchestration. Oh lord. Can they not afford to get an actual orchestra in? Blimey. Yeah, and that is the magic whip. But before we go on to the next one, I want to make it clear that I think the gap of quality between these first four albums and the next four albums is quite wide. So please don't be mad about this next choice. Yay! Ooh, this is the crucifixion because this is the one for many people. Yes, this is the one album that can be read as the peak of Britpop. And yeah, honestly, if aliens came down to Earth and they asked me, uh, could you show us a Britpop song? It would be Parklife, the title track. Yeah, Parklife really is a bit of a poster child for Britpop, isn't it? I really like Parklife, but not as much as the other three records on this list. And I will say that the singles from this album, particularly To The End and This Is A Low, are beautiful as well. And I don't understand why London Loves was never a single. That song rules. The beat is groovy. The simple key melody is... Wah! Just such a good song. I think my controversy and my main problem with this album is... I think Boys and Girls is a bit of a goofy song. And I hate saying this because Boys and Girls really is the bisexual anthem of the 90s. But it's just too silly. But what I will say as an intro, Boys and Girls is a little bit better than the intro to the next one. Yay! I deliberated so much between Parklife and Great Escape for this number three spot, but I did end up going for Great Escape. And yes, I agree, Stereotypes is equally goofy, if in fact goofier than Boys and Girls, as are songs like Mr. Robinson's Quango and The Fade Away, the latter of which sounds like a madness B-side. But listen, the strength of this album comes from the three unbeatable singles. Charmless Man's lyrics paint a particularly good portrait of a man you'd want to punch in the face, and I can't think of another song that does that. Country House, apart from it probably being my favourite song lyrically of all time, has hooks for days, and by hooks I mean melodies, fun guitar riffs. There are so many moments that I can point out to this song where it's like, oh yeah, the trumpet here, ah yeah, the vocals here, oh that little guitar flourish, that is just such a good song. But the one thing I don't quite get about Country House is its fame as being a better song than an Oasis song. I thought all the Blur songs were better than Oasis songs. Hooks for Days is relevant for the other Knockout of the Park single, The Universal, with its amazing orchestration. The terms orchestration and hooks for days aren't really used in the same sentence that often. Yeah, they really reinvented advert music in the UK with that song, didn't they? Listen, Great Escape also has many other highlights that I want to point out in the deeper end. Top Man sounds like an early Gorillaz song. I like the punkness of Globe Alone. I like the danciness of Entertain Me. Yuko and Hero is a beautiful way to end this album as well. It's a really pretty art pop tune that has made me shed a tear in the past as well. Putting Great Escape above Park Life, it is controversial, but I don't think it's anywhere near as controversial as... Yay! Yes! Yes! I love Think Tank. Yes, okay, 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 okay. Let's get the elephant out of the room. I agree that Crazy Beat is the worst song Blur I've ever written. It's even worse than Song 2. In fact, Crazy Beat is Song 2, 2. And yes, Graham Coxon's guitar contributions are sorely missed, but I reckon Orban did learn from Coxon in the guitar aspect, especially from this opening track, Ambulance, has a really Coxon-like guitar riff near the end. And you have these lead singles, Out of Time and Good Song, which are not just beautiful in songwriting, but also beautiful in texture. My favourite element about this album, the textures are so, like, exciting and there's so many things happening that I enjoy. And apart from the singles, there's a lot of underrated tracks as well. I mean, On My Way to the Club 
It's got a really great chorus, one that I really like singing along to, even if the outro does overstay its welcome. And there's songs like Moroccan People's Revolutionary Bowls Club and Gene by Gene that are just so goofy and so stupid that they put a smile to my face. I know I criticised other songs for being goofy and then praising these songs for being goofy, but I don't know, it's the instrumentation and the textures that I just simply prefer. Jets is a song that you probably never think about, but if you are a musician and you play an instrument go pick up your instrument put Jets on and have a jam honestly it will make you appreciate that song a little bit more it's just a fun jammy type thing should it have been included in the album you know how I praise the Universal and Country House earlier for having hooks for days well that also applies to my favorite song from this album brothers and sisters brothers and sisters is a warning of or a note to drag Ah, uh, but the hooks of this thing are so good. I like the guitar. I like the backing vocals. Ooh. I like the main vocals. Brothers and sisters. I like how in one of the verses, all the instrumentation falls out and it's just like one synth playing. I also really like the outro synth. is super groovy. Just such a funky song. It's so good. And it just doesn't get talked about. I don't care if you don't like this album. I will defend it to the death. But it's not my favourite Blur album. There is... But one. Success! Yeah, if you're a Blur fan, you knew this was coming, didn't you? If you know me, you probably knew this was coming as well. I'm currently making videos about albums that I like that aren't new because I want people to have an idea of what my taste in music is. That way, when I review a new album, I feel that people might know where I'm coming from. I want it to go on record that if this video had been a ranking of the thousands of albums that I've listened to, from best from worst to best this one right here would still be at the very top yes blurs 13 is my all-time favorite album and it's my favorite album because despite the disparate styles influences and sounds within this album it feels so holistic all these different influences and sounds they feel connected and on top of that the lyrical themes of this album are fantastic as well for the longest time people assumed this album was about the start and ending of a relationship but then a couple years ago Damon Albarn was like no 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 that um that album is about heroin addiction and everyone sort of scrambled we listened to it and went like Oh wow, it really was about heroin addiction in the end. Especially like caramel, blimey. But this album isn't simply about drug addiction. It is the story of drug addiction being told through the metaphor of a relationship and the parallels between the two. <laughs> Following the text and the subtext, you've got these disparate sounds that do feel connected. I can't think of another album that has such disparate styles between songs one and two. You've got Tender, which is like a gospel-y love song, followed by the unbelievably noisy and compressed Bugman. Then you've got the lead single from 13, Coffee and TV, which to me is Blur putting an end to their own Britpop sound. And I don't know, with this album, there is nothing that quite matches the vibe I get from tracks like Caramel or Trim Trab or Battle. Battle. Battle, 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 battle some more. God, Battle is a good track. But my favourite track in this album has got to be No Distance Left to Run. Wow. I can't think of a breakup song that is more mature and self-aware than this one just beautiful songwriting. I could talk about this album forever, but I don't want to bore you. Go listen to it for yourself and understand where I'll be coming from for every review from now on. How am I even going to end these ranked videos? Uh, that is ranked. I don't know. <laughs> if you enjoyed this diatribe, subscribe. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and want to see my engagements go up with the general public. Oh, hey. uh, let me know how you would rank the Blur albums and let me know which bands you're interested in seeing my ranked list of. I'm not going to do Radiohead because my list of that is quite uninteresting. <laughs> hey, let's go. Positive interaction, engagement. Blah. Blah. Blah.
Blah. Blah. Blah. That'll do. Yeah, this is the album with song two on it. 